So the Ant Pro 2 has been one of the best 60% mechanical keyboards for the last years. It has all the features most look for in a small form factor keyboard. A great typing experience, good stabilizers, key remapping, RGB LEDs, and Bluetooth connectivity. The main feature it's missing is hot swappable switch sockets, but the keyboard we're reviewing today has all of the Ant Pro 2's features, plus hot swap switch sockets, a larger battery, flip out feed, and a more recent Bluetooth 5.1 protocol. All of that and it retails for 90 US dollars, being priced really similarly to the Ampro 2. Is the Keymove 61 the new go-to mid-range 60% mechanical keyboard? Well, let's find out. But before anything, please hit that like button if you're stoked to see new mechanical keyboard content. It's been a while and I'm really happy to take a look at a new keyboard today. So hope you enjoy. This keyboard comes in a nice white box. Inside you'll find the keyboard itself, as well as additional switches. Because yes, this keyboard has hot swappable switch sockets. Pretty cool that they include those so you can have a feel of other switch options. And they're all from Gateron's, and as for the pre-installed switches, I went with Gateron Browns. You also get a braided USB-C cable with an angled connector, a keycap spooler, and a switch puller. The case has a two-layer kind of design. The outer part being white with a matte finish, while the inner part is black and glossy. There is also a black version of this keyboard where both the outer and inner parts are black. The white variant is named Snow Fox, while the black one is named Shadow. Under the keyboard, you get rubber pads, and at the back there are flip-out feet. These feel super solid and have a satisfying click when you set them up. The rubber pads touch the desk in both positions, so the keyboard shouldn't move around. At the back, you get a Type-C port, always nice to see. Then you get two hardware switches to change between the Mac and Windows layouts, and to turn on or off the keyboard while using it over Bluetooth. More on that later. The keyboard has zero flex at all, likely due to the thicker case and the metal plate it has. In terms of layout, this keyboard features a standard NC layout, so finding replacement keycaps is very easy, and you don't get dedicated arrow keys nor function keys, as these are accessible through layers. As for the keycaps, these are the same that we find in the latest generation of the Amp Pro 2 and the Fiker Machinist 1, so they're pretty good overall, they're double shot and PBD, and don't have slits in characters like most double shot keycaps do. However, the font size is not consistent across all keys, which isn't the prettiest, but these should be durable and do the job fine. In terms of switches, it's offered on Banggood with Gateron browns, blues, or reds. But looking at the box, it seems like there is a version with cherry switches. I like Gateron browns, but if you don't, a great feature of this keyboard is that switches are hot swappable, so you can replace them with any switch you like, and the included tool is actually pretty nice. One thing to note is that if you have 5 pin switches, you'll have to cut off the two plastic pins as the PCB doesn't support these. In terms of stabilizers, these are pretty good too, being similar or better than Anpro 2 stabs out of the box. They rattle a bit, but lubing them helps and they sound better after that. So I went ahead and opened it up, first by removing all keycaps. The screw locations holding the keyboard together are not standard though, so replacing the case is likely not an option. However, I think the case is actually pretty nice overall with the feet, and I believe it'll be more durable than the typical RK61 or GK61 cases, being thicker and matte. Looking inside the case, we can see that the two-part design is mostly a visual thing, as the black part is only covering the sides of the keyboard. We can also see the large 3000 mAh battery, compared to the Ampro 2 stock battery, which is only 1900 mAh, it's much larger. To replace all switches, I split the PCB and plate by pulling, as those parts are only held by the switch sockets. And then, using the provided tool work to remove switches, although gatherons are a bit fragile and easier to break, and the tool was scratching the white paint on the plate, so I ended up using a plastic pry tool which worked better while keeping both the switches and the plate intact. I wanted to replace the stock stabilizers with screw in stabs I had on hand, but this keyboard uses plate mounted stabs, so I wasn't able to perform the change. Looking closer at the PCB, we can see that the hop swap sockets are from Gaterons, but my KL switches fit perfectly in there, and I guess cherry switches would as well. 
I also ended up lubing the stabilizers, although they were already lubed where the wire attaches to the housing, and I'll leave you with a sound comparison for you to hear the difference. So not only the kale box burnt orange switches sound better than the Gateron browns in my opinion, I believe that lubing the stabs housings also reduced the initial rattling they had. Not perfect, but definitely better. I've been using the keyboard wirelessly for over two days at work, and I've been really satisfied with the performance. As a full-time developer, I wouldn't tolerate delays nor glitches, and this keyboard performs pretty much as well as a wired keyboard. As always, I wouldn't use it wirelessly for gaming, but for anything where a tiny delay doesn't matter, it should be more than fine. After two days of full use with the LEDs off, I still had battery left. Given that the capacity is much larger than the AMP Pro 2, I would expect it to last easily over a week with the LEDs off, as long as you turn off the Bluetooth when unused. You can connect to three devices all at once and switch between them with Function plus ZXC. A cool feature is that holding function lights up which device you're currently connected to. Connecting to multiple devices and switching between them is faster and more reliable than with the AMP Pro 2, and that alone is a reason to go for the Keymove 61 over the AMP Pro 2 if you plan to use it wirelessly. By using Bluetooth 5.1 over 4.0, you should also get a better range. This keyboard also features RGB LEDs, and you get a bunch of animations on board, some of which I've never seen before, and they look pretty good, most of them being reactive to keystrokes. They shine quite bright overall, more than the AMP Pro 2 I'd say, colors are vibrant and look great, and with a white plate, that helps to reflect light as well. And while there are many built-in effects, you have more control with the software. Speaking of the software, it will indeed let you change the light animations, but also change the layout and layers. The default layout is pretty standard, although the arrow keys are accessible with function and the bottom right section of the board. It didn't take me too long to get used to, even though I'm more used to function plus WASD. It's a pretty nice default layout for me, as I don't use the right control key anyway, so having a function key there instead doesn't bother me. In terms of layouts, I didn't bother switching to the Mac layout, even on a Mac, as the keyboards I use usually on my Mac don't have a Mac-specific layout, so I'm used to the default Windows layout on my Mac, and it works fairly well in my opinion anyway. So now to the software. It is Windows only, and it's still under beta, under the name Apex, so there are some hiccups here and there, and I had to update the firmware to remap keys. Setting static colors was not very easy either. So you get a few more light effects, and you can set the colors you want for the animations, which is pretty cool. You can also set up custom animations frame by frame, although I didn't bother looking into it too much. These custom animations will be available with function plus the closing bracket key. And static colors don't seem to be offered out of the box for some reason, you need to go in the custom animation menu, which is a bit overkill in my opinion. Then you can remap any key to pretty much anything, from normal keys, media keys, system keys, mouse functions, and more. 
One great thing is that you can change some of the default keys on the function layer. So I set WASD to become arrow keys when function is held down. And I remap the menu key to be function, as that's what I'm used to on the Ampro 2. You also get hardware keys, which change the layout to a completely different programmable layer. And you get a total of four, so that's pretty cool. And finally, you get to set up macros, like most keyboard softwares allow. Although the UI is a bit confusing and I wasn't able to remap a key to a macro. Oh well. So overall, I'm very satisfied with this keyboard and it will become my new daily driver. Especially with the lube stabilizers and kale box burnt orange switches I have installed, it both sounds and feels pretty nice. I really like that it has flip out feet, I much prefer this angle than when laid flat, and the fact that it has everything that the Ant Pro 2 has, plus hot swap sockets, a larger battery, and better Bluetooth overall, makes it a very compelling option for under 100 bucks. The only cons would be that the case is not standard and it's not QMK compatible, so you need the proprietary software to customize it, but these are issues that the Ant Pro 2 has as well. The only advantage the Ant Pro 2 has is that its software is not only limited to Windows and also works on Mac and Linux, and it's in a much more stable state at the moment compared to the Keymove Apex software. So that wraps it up for today. A really great product that we had today to review, and I'm looking forward from hearing from any one of you that end up getting it. Let me know if you like it down below. As always, I'll have an affiliate link in the description, so if you're interested in this keyboard, feel free to use that link down below and help the channel at the same time. So thank you for watching, make sure you leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.